Hey guys, today we are going to zip and download files with PHP. We are going to build a small application which we are going to use to compress and download files that are being selected. I have a form in the browser with a bunch of checkboxes. Every checkbox is pointing to a, CSS, to a CSS file. I can check one or more checkbox and press the download button to get the files. Let's try this out. I will choose three files and press download. I will save the zip file to my downloads folder and there it is. Let's open the zip file and check if we got the right files. Yes, those are the files that we had selected. This is what we are going to build. So let's go to the editor and take a look at the project's structure. We need an index file in which we are going to write the form. We need a PHP file to write our PHP code. We have a style sheet to give the form some styling. As you can see, the CSS code is already typed. I'm not going to waste time covering the CSS rules. CSS is not important for this tutorial. Next, I have a folder called themes. In there, we have the theme.css files. Those are the files that the user downloads. And last, I have a downloads folder. This is the folder where the zip file is created. This is the location from where the browser downloads the file. And with all that being said, let's make the font size a little bit bigger and start coding. Let's create a form element. The action attribute is empty. That means that the form will submit the data to the same page. The HTTP method is set to post, which means that we are going to use the super global post variable to catch the data in the PHP file. Inside the form, I will have an info title and below that I will have a div container with a class of form fleet. Inside the div container, I will, I will have a checkbox and a label. Next, I will put the form's submit button. And under the submit button, I will have an error placeholder which will display any error coming from the, from the PHP file. Let's see what we have so far. Let's re reload the page. And as expected, we have the info title, the checkbox and the download button. Now we have to write PHP code to fetch the file names from the themes folder. I'm going to use the glob function. The glob function searches for path names that match a pattern and returns an array containing those path names. In our case here, we are saying to the function to search for all the CSS files inside the themes folder. Let's see what the files variable holds. Let's reload the page and we see that the files variable is holding an array which contains the path names of the CSS files. Next, I will have a for each function to loop through the files array so I can fetch each path name. Next, I have to escape PHP so I can put the form field element inside the loop. Next, I go to the value attribute and set its value to the current path name. And next, inside the label element, I will echo out the file name. The base name function returns the file name from a given path name. And last, we have to go to the name attribute and change it to an array. If we don't do this, we will not be able to send multiple values to the server. Let's see what we have done so far. Reload the page and we see each file name from the themes folder associated with a checkbox. Nice. Now we have to go to the error placeholder and echo out any PHP error. And last, we have to go to the top of the page and require the script.php file. And that's it. We are done with the index file. Now let's go to the PHP file. The first thing that we do is to check if the form is submitted. Next, we have to check if any files are selected. If not, we throw an error. If there are files selected, we are going to assign those files to the themes variable inside the else clause. Remember that the theme files is an array. Next, I'm going to give a name to the zip file that we are going to create. Next, I'm going to create a new zip archive object and I will use the open method to create a new zip file. Now, the first argument is the path name. We want our zip file to be created in the downloads folder. And as a second argument, we are going to use the zip archive create flag to tell the method that the create, to create the file if it doesn't exist. Next, I will loop through the themes array and I will use the add file method to add every selected CSS file in the zip archive. The add file method takes two arguments. The first argument is the path to the file we want to add. And the second argument is the file's name inside the zip archive. 
Again, we use the base name function, so we add only the file's name to the archive and not the whole path. Next, we use the close method to close the created zip file. And last, we use the header function to redirect the browser to the created zip file so it can be downloaded. But let's comment out the header function and run a test. I will select a few files and press the download button. If you look at the downloads folder, you will see the created zip file. Ok, the script is working, but I'm not 100% happy with it. If I run the script again, the themes.zip file will be overridden from the new created themes.zip file. And that's ok, because every user will get the files that he selects. But what happens if two or more users press the download button at the exact same time? We cannot have multiple files with the same name inside a folder. So there will be some overrides happening and at the end there, there will be only one zip file. In this case only one user will get the correct files and the others not. I hope it makes sense. So with that in mind we have to make some changes to our code. We will assign a unique name to each created zip file. But first let's delete the zip file so we have a clear folder. Let's go under the themes array and create an alphanumeric string. The string contains the numbers 0 to 9 and the English alphabet in upper and lower case. The logic here is that we are going to shuffle the string and take the first four characters and append them in the themes name. By doing so we are going to create a unique name for the zip file. So let's set in a variable the number of characters that we want to fetch from the string. Next, I will use the substring function to get the first four random characters. I will pass in as the first argument the string shuffle function which will randomize the string. And next I will set the offset to, to 0 and 4. That means that we want from the string the first four characters. Next we are going to append those random characters to the zip file's name. Now we will have a unique file name for our zip file. Let's run a test. I'm going to select two files and press the download button. I'm saving the zip file to my computer and we see in our projects folder that the zip file name has changed. Let's download another zip file. We see a second file with a different name in the downloads folder. Let's download another file. Now we have three files in the service downloads folder. You see where I'm going with this. Now we don't have to worry if users are pressing the download button at the same time, but we will end up with thousands of files on the server. Let's fix this. Let's go under the first if statement and fetch all the zip file names from the downloads folder. Next I will loop through the file's name and delete each file. So every time we run the script, we will delete any previous created zip file. And so in any given time, we will have only one zip file in the folder. Let's run a final test. And it works. There is only the new created file in the folder. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys.